to another episode of Working the Web to Win. Today we're going to call it Hector Goes App Happy because what he's going to talk about are the 20 best apps for Apple and Android. So it's an Apple app. Try to say that three times fast. Apple app, Android app. <laughs> I mean, you know, it'd be great if the Android and the Apple apps work as good as Auto Radio. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I want to just give our call-in uh, guests the number. It's 213-943-3808. That's 213-943-3808. Of course, you can find us on workingthewebtowin.com. You can find us on Blogger, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, and YouTube. Plus, we're also on Pinterest and Instagram now. Um, our show hosts, um, Tub King, yeah, Tub King and um, Iron Life Health, you know, are... They always have all kinds of specials going on. You know, we always recommend people go to their website and check out the current thing that's going on. I know right now the Tub King has their Labor Day special. It's going to be good through the 30th. Right. So if you go there and check out their current specials, they have specials for, you know, clawfoot tubs and walking tubs and the showers. Uh, they have some really cool things there that you want to check out. And Vibrant Life Health, okay, also gives you the guaranteed lowest cost for losing weight guaranteed of anybody I know because it's guaranteed. So <laughs> they lock you in a room and refuse to feed you for a week. <laughs> <laughs> Actually I know they do they'll do it but I was there the other day and I saw like four people walk out with big smiles on their face. Two of them had just finished their three day program and both of them had lost one lost twenty and one lost twenty seven pounds. Wow, so they guarantee that you can lose twenty to forty pounds yeah. in that forty day period and those people were doing it so I know it's real. And it's um, tracked by physicians, too. So that's, that's the other thing. It's you know, there's a lot of bad diets out there, and you got to watch out for those things. It's kind of like free apps. You know, sometimes yeah. uh, there's some, some little you know baggage that comes along with it that you want to be aware of. And a lot of people have problems with diets because, you know, they'll, they'll lose the weight, put it back on, lose the weight, put it back on. It's like a yo-yo. Yeah. It, it, again, that's you want to avoid those kinds of dangerous things because, I mean, you can actually hurt yourself pretty bad. But today, you can also hurt yourself pretty badly All with right. With some apps, <laughs> yeah. um, and at the beginning of the article, we we're talking about apps. And yeah, what's, what's free? Ago, right, <laughs> right. Is it really free? There's no such <laughs> really thing as free so that's in this free world. Launch, huh? And people have to understand when you get an app and you yeah. download it on your machine, yeah. there's some kind of cost. Otherwise, right. how could they give it away? There's sure. no such thing as people giving away stuff for free mm -hmm. because you can't maintain a business. You can't do the development, right. to create the product, and so on. I mean, it's not a charity type of thing. People have to be paid to do stuff, otherwise they can't feed their families. And the way most apps work today, what they what we call premium apps, because right. there's a premium in there paying some way. Shape sure. Uh, most of them will sell for adware in some way. Right. That is, they're going to show you ads, and hopefully you'll click on them, and they get paid mm -hmm. so much for each click. But they also a lot of them capture your information and sell your information. And that's one of the ones that I have a big problem with. Oh yeah, so heck, some of some of the uh, some of the uh, what do you call malware? They'll get in there and pretty much unload your entire phone. I mean, yeah. they can get into your you know your, your all of your lists, your all of, all the people that you've got uh, on for phone numbers. I mean, mm -hmm. they can just rifle it once they're in there. Well, here's the thing: a lot of the big big hacks, and again, you hear people yeah. talking about all the hacks and the Chinese and all that kind of stuff. But the reality financial is financial information. Whatever right. you've got on that phone, because face it, it's not a phone; it's a damn computer. Right. And today, phones are a big piece of the methodology that hackers use to get at your stuff. Because once they know who you are from Facebook or whatever, mm -hmm. then they, they a lot of times they know what your cell phone number is. Right. Because you list your cell phone so mm -hmm. that Facebook can contact you if they think that something's going, going on. But again, now they have your cell phone number. And if they can hack your cell phone number, which is usually much easier to hack than your computer, they have all kinds of information because most people keep stuff that they shouldn't be keeping yeah. on their phones in there. Well, you know, it's like it's like you know, I just bought a new car, and I could ha I could have opted for uh, an option where literally my my phone would communicate with my car, start the car, right. could, you know, turn on the air conditioning. It's like you gotta be crazy to do that. I mean, it could turn left when it wants to oh, turn right. Exactly. You know, I mean. I, Again, if you can do all that before you know it, somebody can hijack you in your car. Yeah. And that's actually been happening. I'm sure you've seen the YouTube uh, videos and that. The, the, was it CBS that did the special uh, on the hacking? You know, so those kinds of things can happen. On top of that, there's always the privacy issue. I hear sure. people say, well, you know, I don't have any privacy. You know, I want privacy. Well, 
If you have a smartphone, you don't have any privacy. Privacy don't exist. Even these people who have black phones, they want to bought those black phones and yeah. they want the, the black hat right. and, uh, count, uh, convention. convention and yeah. immediately got hacked. Right. <laughs> so, so, you know, there's no such thing as, you know, privacy. Privacy doesn't in this exist world. anymore. Um, when, I, when I compiled the list of, you know, apps, uh, so this list is compiled from a four or five different lists. Right. So it's not just Hector's picks and mm -hmm. that type of thing. Um, but what I did was I looked at the top 50 in several different places and I coped with those top 10s and top 20s and so on. And these are the ones that most people have. I tried to keep away from the ones that have come with phones. Right. Because that really doesn't count. I and mean, you haven't really downloaded how do you measure whether that's, you know, a really good app or not. One of the places you can do to figure out whether it's a good app or not, obviously the app stores, you can go there and they're supposed to tell you how many people downloaded that app. Right. Yeah, okay. because as you pointed out in your blog, the problem is so many apps are being developed, it's even hard for the app stores to keep up with them. They and, can't bet them all. And a couple of years ago, there was a big deal on Apple mm -hmm. where somebody had, I mean, there were several hundred thousand downloads on this yeah. app, and then they discovered that they had malware. Yeah. So that can still happen even with 100,000 mm -hmm. downloads. And I, my recommendation is always, you, know, you don't download anything unless it's got 100,000 downloads. And you shouldn't download it either if it doesn't have at least four stars. Right. Because if it's got three stars and it's a mediocre app, right. what do you want to put it on your phone? That means that's just asking for problems. Um, I also found that on Wikipedia, you could go there and they show you a list of the apps that have a billion downloads. Mm -hmm. Wow, a billion with a B. Yeah, there's like... 12 of them or something like that. And there's also a, a, a list of a million millionaire downloads. Right. right. That got millions of downloads on them. So I thought those were worth looking at. Now, I know the first one in my list for Apple is also a really high placement in the Android list. Mm -hmm. And what do you think that is? Well, I can read your list here. It's Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You're cheating. You're looking at the list. I'm oh, sorry. I'm evolved. I can read. <laughs> But you well, know, thanks for playing anyway. The, the number one social net on the right. internet is Facebook. Right. I would think the number one app, right. you know, that people are using is, is Facebook app. And in reality, a lot of the social nets are up in the top ten or so. Sure. You know, and and again, like I pointed out in the article, there's no such thing as the best of, mm -hmm. because the best of is different for different. If I'm a business person, the best of for me mm -hmm. is going to be pretty different than my 18 year old. Who the best of would be the best games. Right. You know? <laughs> and the same thing with you know a stay-at-home mom or somebody who's into other things, a cook, right? You know, would, would be into into different things. Yeah, in fact, what I thought was interesting was out of the uh, top four, three of them were social nets: one yeah. of them, Facebook, Instagram, and of course YouTube. Which yeah, we are not in the social net. And people are using the social nets yeah. more. I mean, that's a reality. Some of the things that I thought would be in there, it'd be like you know QR code scanners, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They weren't really. They'd be at the end of the top 50, right. 50 list. You know, functional products that I thought people use. But again, Pandora is, and there's actually lots of the different radio mm -hmm. type stations on there. Pandora's one of one of the Spotify is the other one. You'll see them move up and down the list. The other thing I wanted to point out was that these lists change. Right. So this is not the cumulative right. list for 2015. <laughs> I mean, if you go to, to some of the, you know, like iTunes, and you look at their top 50, a week from now, yeah. it'll be a little different. So, But, you know, again, you can get an idea of the best ones because if a lot of people are downloading them. you got to believe that they've got to be halfway decent good. So we talked about, you know, Pandora is uh, number one on Apple. The number one on the Android one, I think, was Spotify. Mm -hmm. A little bit different. Um, Skype was big in both of them. Right. And since I think uh, Microsoft now on Skype, if I'm not mistaken, um, that's sort of interesting that that's in there. Uh, the first one, the first game to come up was a word game called Words with Friends, and that's a Zanga game. And the only reason I'm even going to bring up Zanga, okay, because I remember us doing a show about three or four years ago when we talked about you know, how many people were using games on Facebook. Sure. Okay, and, and you would think it's the younger crowd. Mm -hmm. But the reality is the average gamer on Facebook is 45 plus. <laughs> <laughs> And they're that playing sounds, farm. That sounds so, so wrong. <laughs> and they're playing Farmville or whatever. Oh, yeah. And again, if you're a, if you're a guy into stocks and bonds and stuff yeah. like that, you ought to be looking at Zenga. <laughs> if you can buy those shares, yeah. I'd buy them because I'm telling you, 
They have like about 40 games now. Yeah. And those games are available on both platforms. And people are using them like they're going out of stock. Wait a minute, look at my app so I can buy that stock. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, uh, there's a Zanga game uh, on the Android one also. So, again, that's something that people ought to be looking at. Um, I noticed that the Weather Channel was a big download, both on Android and Apple. Yeah, well, I've seen you many times when we're out on an account or something, you hear some rumbling in the background. There's Hector on his phone. Go see that weather radar. Yeah, but that weather radar, I'm not using, you know, the Weather Channel. I'm using one that's, that actually locks into the, the closest yeah. radar tower yeah. and gives me that, that oh, okay. information. So that's a little bit different. That's what I use when I was in Boy Scouts because, again, yeah. we're out in the open. Even when right. you're in a tent, you're on the open, you know. So I want to know what's going on. So I always have that with Woody. Yeah, well, it's true. Also, the Weather Channel, of course, has programming as well. Right. They got programs. You can actually watch videos and stuff like that. Right. Was actually, they have some pretty interesting. And the one you'd probably like, it's uh, uh, instead of the Weather Gone Wild, it's Weather Gone Viral. <laughs> so I saw that. I said, "Well, that would be right up Hector's alley." You know, I remember seeing the commercial that the guy says, "Yeah, what are you going to have now? A weather channel?" And yeah. the guy started laughing. <laughs> well, the reality is, segmented content yeah. that's specialized is all the rage today. As a matter of fact, there's only one other element that goes with that specialized content, and that's on demand. Right. And that brings up one of the next ones because we've already talked about Twitter and Facebook mm -hmm. and LinkedIn and all those guys in there. Um, Netflix is a big one. And, and Although I don't think I'd want to be sitting there watching, you know, Netflix. Or now, here's the funny thing: I've been on OE camp out with the Boy Scouts, yeah. yeah. And Boy Scouts aren't supposed to have right. electronic devices with them, but the OA guys they seem to let them get away with that kind right. of stuff. And you'll always see them watching Netflix. <laughs> I mean, if they're not in the conversation, they're sitting there watching the video. So there's one guy with the hand power generator keeping the thing. Now, they, up. These kids have expensive phones. <laughs> they have the battery packs okay. and all that other kind of stuff. Um, so in other words, instead of taking out camping gear, they're schlepping the, the, the smartphones and batteries. Yeah. And here's the thing. If you're an investor, yeah. you would be investing in Netflix. Yeah. If you can. <laughs> because, again, these are TV killer type products. Right. I mean, they're first to action. Right. And not only are they so, so successful, guess what? All the TV type channel content holders like right. HBO mm -hmm. and Cinemax yeah. and Stars yeah. and, and Max and all those guys, they're all moving to do the same thing. And they're all now trying to sell their content on the internet. Yeah. So these guys were first. They're well, well, well entrenched. They have proprietary technologies that they've invented. Yeah. It's going to be hard to be displacing them. But you'll see these other players coming into it. And again, all these things are going to affect the direct revenue that TV stations have. As a matter of fact, there are several congressmen now trying to pass laws to do away with on-air TV, that mm -hmm. is, wireless mm -hmm. TV signals. I hope they don't do that, because I still like it. Oh, I wonder who's putting money in their pockets, huh? A <laughs> <laughs> um, couple more things in there. There was a couple of games more that were in, in the, the Apple one. You'll notice that Google Search is in the top 20. And that's because it's not standard on iPhones. Mm. Matter of fact, none of the Google products, for the most part, are still. Do you wonder why that happens? <laughs> and what's there an oversight? And because of that, a yeah. lot of the Google products are in the top fifty list. Right. Yeah. Of course, iPhone. you get really mad. So getting mad, take it out on Angry Birds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Angry Bird was in their top list again on both of them. So, and I, I personally like that game. I mean, if you're really frustrated, you want to just you know do some unintellectual stuff. That's a good one. I'll take your word for it. I never, I never, I never got hit when it came to Angry Birds. I'm like, yeah, okay, <laughs> snooze. Um, what I liked was the one that was the Shazam. Yeah, the Shazam yeah. one was pretty neat. I'm like, I haven't tried it because I don't have an iPhone. Yeah. But you're in a room and you're listening to the music, and the guy says, "What's that song called?" And he, I guess he turns on his Shazam program. Yeah. And Shazam says it's the X Y Z. Sounds like the basis of a bar bet to me, right? Everybody <laughs> guesses what the, the song is, and then Shazam is the yeah. uh, judge. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> um, then the next one, again, another Zanga game, which is draw something, which is essentially like Pictionary. Right. You know, but what you do is you draw something poorly, I hope, okay. and then you, you you send it to your friend, right. and they got to guess what it is. And I'm, I'm assuming if you're in a bar, you're betting on beers or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure. Another bar bet app. <laughs> yeah. Um, Number 15 on the Android was the flashlight. And mm -hmm. both of them have flashlights, but they were different flashlight apps. They weren't the same app, both Android and Apple. But I, 
flashlight apps have been one of the most useful things I've yeah. ever had. I mean, you walk around all of a sudden, oh, where's my keys? I dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another thing that was sort of interesting. Facebook Messenger yeah. was in both lists, for the most part, as separate apps from Facebook. Because yeah. people use them to communicate with each other instead of texting. No. Texting isn't convenient enough? Or so so, annoying so, enough? <laughs> you know, I would think they would use Snapchat. Yeah. Because again, when you snap somebody, Snapchat, then the thing self self destructs after right. you know yeah. a little bit of time, unless you do a screen print of it. Which again, you have to have another app to be able to do that because screen printing is not always standard in most of the smartphones. And then to round out the, the last four, you got Google Earth. Yeah, now Google Earth is kind of funny. It, it's almost like. You know, it's interesting that you can see any part of the globe, but I mean, how many times have you seen some news feed where naked people on the Google, you know, the Google Earth camp picked up stuff that wasn't supposed to make a right. cut? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I saw a top 20 list one time that was like that. Um, the, and you know, that stuff gets passed around real fast. Right, right. It becomes viral right. very quickly. Yeah. People are writing articles on it. Uh, mint, fruit Ninja fruit Free. Ninja. <laughs> this game is sort of bizarre. I mean, the fruit are falling, and you uh, got like samurai swords. Okay, and you're supposed slice to like, be and dice, them up make a fruit salad. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and of course, iHeart, which is now, I don't know if they went public or not, but they're, you hear them on the radio all the time download yeah. the app, download the app. It, I would think it would be actually a higher number, but it wasn't. And movies by Flickster, I use this program quite a bit myself. And not to rate movies, because right. that's what the, the, really the big goal is. But you can use it to play movies on your tablets. So on my tablet, my son's tablet, I have all the movies that I've purchased. Right. That has a digital version. Right. That I can download them off of Flixster and play them and watch them. I can either watch them live off the net if I have a really good strong connection, huh? or actually download it and play. So I use it for that. And again, it, it does ratings and all that kind of stuff. And you can buy videos just like the other ten video portals out there now that everybody's doing. So we came across that, and we go to the, the Android app, and you'll notice that the Messenger for Facebook is number one on the Android, which I thought was sort of weird also, because how many different texting platforms right. are there on Android? <laughs> <laughs> There's, I mean, a ton of them. Billions. Yeah, and billions. billions. And again, Snapchat is number six, which I thought, again, would be higher. But a lot of adults don't use Snapchats, unless they're like congressmen in Washington. <laughs> Where they're trying to make sure that stuff disappears very quickly. Here's something sort of weird. Google Photos was high on the Android list. And that's a Google product. Yeah. That's because Google Photos normally doesn't it's not a separate app. Even though if you have Google Plus, you're all you're already using Google Photos in your mm -hmm. Okay, which is sort of weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then we hit Facebook, Instagram, and Pandora before we hit Snapchat. So again, all those were overlapping in the other ones. And number seven, which is my favorite, the super bright flashlight, which is something I use. Most of the ones that I use a lot are not even in the, this list. I mean, there's only one with like number 21. Which one do you use a lot? I use Waze a lot. Mm -hmm. It's W A Z E. Yeah, I've actually got Waze on my. Uh, that's one of the few apps that I actually had. It was that good. Yeah. And what really sucks about Waze is it's the most privacy invasive of product course. I've ever seen on the planet. Yeah. I mean, you stop at a stoplight, and it starts playing you a commercial. Yeah. Okay? Or you get in it, and after it's been, it's been watching you for like a week, yeah. it starts saying, are you going home? <laughs> or, and then you get up in the morning, you get in the car, and says, are you going to work? <laughs> it literally asks you those questions. Yeah, well, fortunately with me, I don't use it that often. Mostly I use it when I ride back and forth from Palm Coast, because I want to see what the weather is. Well, not the weather, what the traffic is right. like on 95, because the last thing you want to do is get stuck in a monster jam up on 95, and I've got alternate routes, but you can't get to the alternate right. routes if you hit the jam up. Right. So. And here's the other thing, is a lot of people started using ways because they wanted to know where the cops are. Right, or where the, uh, the traffic, traffic cams right. are. All those the traffic are cams are cops and yeah. accidents, okay? Well, guess what? Cops are driving around with ways running <laughs> <laughs> computers back. But again, that was number 21, yeah. and it was like number 28 or something yeah. like that, or 30 on, on the iPhones, which, again, the people who told me about it were iPhone users, so I thought that was sort of weird. Um, WhatsApp, which is actually owned by Facebook, was number eight, and again, that's one of these texting programs, and you can text all over the world, and you're just using your data plan, mm -hmm. and 
It's really big overseas, especially in South America. It's not that big in the U.S. for some reason, but it is number eight because. Again, apparently a lot of people. Yeah, well, apparently this. Well, not to mention the fact that uh, cause I was over in Costa Rica, and I don't know if this is still the case, but last time I was over there, it took you about six months just to be able to get a cell phone. Yeah, oh yeah. Because it's all still run by the government over there. And again, what you do is nice. most most of them they they import them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they buy them over here and then yeah. they hide them somewhere on their body yeah. across the border. Yeah, but I mean that doesn't mean anything. You still have to get be able to connect it to the network. Yeah. So I'm sure they you probably they probably connect the. Uh, you know the messaging before they can actually get voice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Generally, you don't have to be. You can be on the outside of a cell right. and go through texting. Um, so let me go through some of these real quick because we're going to run out of time. We got Spotify at number nine. Netflix, of course, big one. Star Wars, which was oh, one of the only games that I really sort of recognized on this thing, and theirs was like a series of different ones. And you got piano tiles, which I've never heard of. Apparently, <laughs> some kind of game that you can click on and play on the piano, and it's like a memory game or so on. K I K or Keek Kick. is uh, a texting program that's used all over the world, especially in Asia a lot. Uh -huh. uh, NFL Mobile, you would think that would be big in there, especially somewhere in the NFL yeah, season right now. Yeah, for sure. Or a couple of antivirus type products, like CM Security Antivirus and 360 Security Virus, and then Subway Surfer was. Sort of in between those, that's a game. Yeah, you, get you, to, you get to dodge the oncoming subway cars. Right, right. <laughs> and then you got Pinterest, Amazon shopping, and then the new guy uh -huh. is FanDuel. Uh -huh. I think have a friend who's a big fan yeah, of yeah. And FanDuel is like, if you watch TV on the weekend, it's every other commercial. Oh, yeah. Right? I know. So it's amazing dropping, how much they were spending. They're dropping some TV. serious amount of money, yeah. and they're telling people to drop down those at FanDuel things. So the big thing I want to tell, make sure that our, our listeners understand is, when you're downloading these things, you really need to, you know, do your due diligence. Take your time, read about it, talk to people about it, and so on, and make sure that you have an antivirus, anti-spyware program on your phone already before you're downloading these things. I mean, there's no reason for you not to have those. There's plenty of free ones. Oh yeah. And again, I recommend buying any programs that you really like. Because you eliminate a lot of the adware and all the that. Annoyware. Yeah, the annoyware <laughs> that's in there that, that are messing with you. Of course, you can buy, uh, you can get our uh, internet marketing for free. Internet marketing tips for the 21st century for free if you go to the blog. Uh, but also go to the, the notes page, which has links to lots of these different lists. If you're a gamer, go to that list and so on. So on the notes page on the, on the blog, you will get uh, information like that. Uh, for our Club WQ members, obviously, you can go to the Dropbox. So I know we're about four minutes left in the show. I want to make sure it's about well, six minutes left in the show. Yeah, we've got a couple extra minutes. Do you have any big, do you have any big bites this week that you want to you mention? Know, one of the big bites that I really had that I, I saw was that the, the number of people that are using these apps mm -hmm. keeps going up every year. Well, the number of people that are developing the apps has been going up by leaps and bounds. Now, here's the thing. I read a study recently that said that people are sort of starting to lose interest. Mm -hmm. In the apps, um, mainly because they have to install them on there. Mm -hmm. So, and what most people don't really understand, if you are a business, you don't actually have to have an app right. to have app-like functionality. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you have a really good dynamic website, they can scale to the different devices, right. and you set it up properly, your website can act like an app mm -hmm. because all they have to do is have a shortcut to your website or blog. On their smartphone, when they click on it, now they have access to whatever features you have on that site. Right. And that could be videos, podcasts, all kinds of other useful stuff without having an app installed on their phone. Because some phones don't have 32 gigs of RAM mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff in itself. That's one thing I think people just don't get sometimes. And also, you don't have to download it. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to do anything with it. And most of those don't have commercials on them. Okay. So, for example, if if they go to our blog, blogs working the way to win you know, perfectly fit the phone, it'll automatically scale, and they can read any of the blogs that we have on there. If there's a audio on there, also they can click on it, and if there's a video on it, they can click on it without having to install yeah any kind of app whatsoever. Makes it a lot more convenient. Speaking of going up, my first worldwide weird is about a plane that, uh, or actually a glider. That NASA is working on that they claim will be able to soar to the edge of space on pure air currents, no propulsion necessary. That's because the edge of space doesn't have air currents. Yeah, well, <laughs> actually, the, 
It does only in a certain part of the planet. You want to guess where it is? Antarctica? The Andes. Okay, yeah, because what they found out was down in Venezuela, the, I guess the, there's a certain type of a mountain wave that literally, they, they say it pushes it pushes the atmosphere up into the stratosphere, up mm. to feet, up as high as ninety thousand feet. Wow. And they're commi and obviously this is going to be a fully pressurized, you know. Uh, there's not enough to breathe. Well, not to mention they probably have the guy in the spacesuit, kind of like what they did when they when they fly the U two up there. But now the U two is a jet power glider. This thing has no propulsion whatsoever. They tow it up, drop it off, and let it hit, hit that. Wave that rises off of the mountains, and they think that they can literally get it up to eighty or ninety thousand feet. Should be interesting to see. What happens if they get outside of that wave area? <laughs> well, then you come down very quickly, you know. Because actually, when they did the, uh, the latest, where they had the um, Red Bull, where the guy jumped from space, I mean, he was the first guy that did. The first one that did it was back in the sixties, and it was an Air Force project. And uh, this dude jumped from like a hundred thousand feet, and literally, he said for the first minute. He thought he was just hanging in space because obviously there's no wind. He couldn't feel anything. So he turned on his back and he could see the gondola just going, boom, you know. <laughs> and then he realized he, he was falling. And he was believed that he, he actually got close to the speed of sound during the jump because there's no wind resistance. You know, once you hit wind resistance, then you reach terminal velocity because you can't travel fast. But since there was the no air, you couldn't hear the boom. Couldn't hear anything. I mean, but I mean, that guy was cooking, you know. For, for the you know because again for 100,000 feet the atmosphere really doesn't have anything appreciable to about 60,000 feet so for the first so if he had a radar gun on him he yeah. could figure out how fast it's going yeah well you know they, they can calculate those things you know but the, the point was is that uh, he was the first person to ever do it and then of course they kind of replicated they went a little higher than the new one but you know you have to realize the difference in technology between the 1960s and you know 2014 yeah yeah huge 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 and, and and there was another guy that tried it and died. Because he wanted to, and he was a private guy. Because actually, there was a, it was a Netflix that I saw this guy guy on, and, and he, uh, he 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 actually commissioned. He had to actually beg a uh, company for one of the pressure suits, because yeah. you know, and, and and he commissioned a company to actually build it. They built two different gondolas to do it. But what happened with him was there was a failure in the pressure suit, and he died. They couldn't. They couldn't get back. They couldn't get him back down. In fact, he lived for several weeks before he finally. He died in, in, in the gondola. No, but what happened was it depressurized. By the time they dropped the gondola back down and recovered him, he was in a coma for like four weeks before he finally died. So he never got to jump out of the gondola. No, he actually. Here's what happened. It was kind of a crazy thing. The first time he did it, the, there was a there was a there was a problem with the gondola, so they, they dropped it back down a parachute. The second time he did it. He couldn't get out of the gondola because they had, you know, the oxygen system was tethered, and for some reason they didn't factor in the cold of space. He couldn't detach the tether, so he, he couldn't jump. So he had to literally ride the gondola all the way back down under parachute power. And then the third time, he well, on the way up, that's when he had the suit malfunction. That's the ultimate that killed him. Talk about just, you know, scary stuff. Well, that was just scary stuff of being snake bit. I mean, because this guy just well, yeah, he's, he's using older technology probably and that stuff. Yeah. Things from yeah. Yeah. So that was that was one of them, and then now here's here's something that's kind of similar because you know I could imagine being way up there and being airsick. Well, they said now people that are doing these virtual reality headsets are literally battling simulator sickness. It's a very common effect where they said you really get sick with these virtual reality simulators, you know, yeah. because you got these VR goggles, and apparently it just monkeys around with the inner ear. It's so fierce. And well, they, it just shows you how much your eyes actually yeah. affect. Yeah. You know what you perceive is going right. on. Perception does create your reality. Yeah, and it's, it's it's a pretty common problem now, and so I guess that's going to be one of the things until they can perfect that. A lot of people aren't really going to be having some problems with it. Yeah, they're going to be kicking the world and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> and then the last one had nothing to do with space, but it's kind of interesting. It says a man's weird rock is actually a twelve thousand year old fossil. This is the guy that literally dug up a rock. Back in 1997, he hung on to it. It looked so strange. We finally posted it on Facebook, and, and some researchers said, "Hey, that's a a bone from uh, what was it a mammoth?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was using his doorstop. <laughs> the guy's got a fossil. <laughs> Look at weird rock. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, I found this mastodon. It was mastodon bone, which is kind of like a, a mammoth. Because right. you know those things were roaming all around North America yeah. for a long time. In fact, the last ones were actually, the last ones on the planet were up in Alaska, yeah. on a little island. 
where they got they got kind of got cut off from the rest of the population. Those are the last ones to die. Yeah. Those, that was only like ten thousand years ago. They actually years found ago. some, believe it or not, in Siberia yeah. not very long ago. Only a couple, a few. Yeah, well, sometimes when they find them in Siberia, they find them with fur and with some of the meat on the bones. No, so, no, these were alive. You know, living mastodon. No, they didn't find any alive. Yeah. They found it with living tissue, but they weren't alive. I'll show you. I'll, I'll okay. give you a right for you. Uh, um, that's a bar bet for me. <laughs> Ten bucks says you're wrong. Get the app out, please. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I only want to do one beer. Uh, here's one here's another one for you. One last one. They, the paleontologists discover a whale fossil on top of a mountain. Most people would think that that's impossible, but you have to realize that a lot of places that used to be underwater, under the sea, because of you know mm. millions of years. Tectonics and all right. that stuff. Right. They, they routinely find fossils even on, on Everest. Yeah. A lot of that stuff used to be under the ocean. Well, the mountain, I guess they're older than most people. Well, not only that, but you have to realize that where the plate boundaries collide, a lot of times those yeah. were ocean bottoms. Well, when they collide, it, it folds them and they, they go, they start to go up. Well, guess yeah. what? Now that becomes the top of a mountain. I know we got no time left. Uh, <laughs> I want to make sure to tell people to go to Vibrant Life Health Center's website and check out the stuff they got going on there. And if you're a chiropractic uh, client, if you're a very first time, they have a special where you like, Hundred dollars special uh, uh, exam, right? Um, and then, of course, they have the weight loss program that you really got to see. Yeah. Um, Tub King also has a, a special going on all month. Yeah, and next week, we'll be talking about blogging as a business for our next episode. So, yeah. tune in if you want to find out how to make some folding green, folks. So, until next time, guys, we'll talk to you then. Keep working the web to win.